So often when you learn about limits in a calculus one class, you learn about limits from the left, limits from the right, and you look at some examples where left-hand limits and right-hand limits are not the same, and neither of them are equal to the function value. That being said, most of these examples are piecewise defined functions or perhaps simply graphs of functions. Well, today I'd like to show you an example that I found in a 1959 issue of the Mathematical Gazette of a function that has this kind of strange behavior without it being explicitly defined as a piecewise function. So it's going to be this function f of x, which is defined as the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over n to the x, all raised to the n to the x. So let's find the function value, the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit, all at x equals zero. Okay, so let's start with the function value. So that simply means that everywhere we see an x, we're gonna plug in the number zero. So we've got the limit as n goes to infinity of one plus one over n to the zero, raised to the n to the zero power. But pretty clearly, we know that n to the zero is always equal to one. So we simply get one plus one to the one, or in other words, we get the number two. Okay, so we've seen that the function has the value of two at zero. So now let's look at the left-hand limit. In other words, the limit from below. So let's start just looking at what's going on if x is less than zero. So let's notice for x values that are negative, we have n to the x is approaching zero as x is appro as n is approaching infinity. That's because if we've got x less than zero, that essentially sends the n to the denominator. So we're seeing the denominator get larger and larger and larger. And then likewise, kind of the dual to this is that one over n to the x, in other words, n to the minus x, is approaching infinity in this scenario. Okay, so now let's look at our function. So we're not taking the limit yet. Well, I guess we're taking the limit with respect to n because that's inside of our function definition, but we're not taking the limit of x. We're just in this setting right here where x is less than zero. Okay, so f of x will be equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of, I'm gonna write this as one plus n to the minus x, all raised to the n to the x. And then by this discussion that we just had over here, notice that this bit right here is charging off bigger and bigger and bigger towards infinity whereas this exponent is approaching zero, again, by our previous discussion. So that makes this into an indeterminate form of type infinity to the zero. So let's put that here. So we've got something of type infinity to the zero. In other words, we've got one of these exponential indeterminate forms. So in, the, in order to work with an exponential indeterminate form, the standard thing to do is to take the natural log, changing it into a nicer indeterminate form that we can use L'Hopital's rule. So let's do that. So let's take the log of both sides. So we've got the log of f of x is now equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of, this will be n to the x times the log of one plus n to the minus x. But now what type is this? Well, let's look at this. n to the x is approaching zero, so this is zero times, well, natural log of infinity is infinity, so this is of type zero times infinity. But let's see, that is not quite the best form yet. Maybe we would take this n to the x, send it downstairs, and we'll have n to the minus x. And now this is of type, well, let's see, infinity over infinity, which is good because we can apply L'Hopital's rule to that. So let's do just that. So we've got the natural log of f of x 
is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity. So now we're gonna apply L'Hopital's rule to this object right here. And we've got to be careful, what do we take the derivative with respect to? Well, since our limit is with respect to n, we take the derivative with respect to n. So let's see, the derivative of the numerator will be, let's see, one over one plus n to the minus x times, well, we've got to use the chain rule, so the derivative of the inside, which is natural log of minus x times n to the minus x. Okay, nice. And then the derivative of the denominator, well, that's just gonna give us this natural log of minus x times n to the minus x. You might look at that and be a little bit worried because we've got this natural log of n to the minus x, but remember that x is negative, so that's really natural log of a positive number there. So we get some pretty clear simplification. Notice that this and this cancel. And then we've got the limit as n goes to infinity of one over one plus n to the minus x. But notice n to the minus x is approaching infinity, so that means that denominator is approaching infinity, which makes the whole thing approach zero. So that means we have this is equal to zero. But let's look at what we actually have. We have the natural log of our function is equal to zero. But what does that mean? So taking an exponential of both sides, that tells us that f of x is equal to e to the zero, which is one. But that is true for all values of x less than zero. That means that f is a constant function back in the negative world. So that means if we take this limit from below, we'll also get one. So let's see, that means that the limit as x goes to zero from below of f of x is equal to one. But notice that's different than what we had over here, which I'll summarize. We have f of zero is equal to two. So we've already shown that the left-hand limit and the function value are not the same. So now let's maybe go ahead and look at the right-hand limit. We're gonna do the same kind of thing, we'll say, for x bigger than zero, we have n to the x is approaching infinity as n is approaching infinity and n to the minus x is approaching zero as n goes to infinity. Okay, but now let's look at our function. f of x is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of, well, we've got the same kind of thing going on here. Okay. But now in this case, this n to the minus x is approaching zero, and then this n to the x is approaching infinity. So what does that mean? That means we have something of type one to the infinity, which is still an exponential indeterminate form. But now we can play the same game that we did before, and that same game being like, take the log of both sides and do some simplification. In this case, instead of have, having something of the form infinity over infinity, in the next to last step, we'll have something of the form uh, zero over zero. But this will deposit us at the same limit that we have right here. We'll have the natural log of f of x in this case is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of one over one plus n to the minus x. But as we discussed right here, this n to the minus x term is approaching zero in this setting, which means this whole limit is approaching one over one plus zero, in other words, the number one. But if the natural log of f of x is equal to one, well, that means that f of x is equal to e. So we've got f of x is equal to e right here but that's gonna hold for all values of x bigger than zero. So that means that our limit as x goes to zero from above of f of x is also equal to e because in the view of this limit, it's simply just a constant function. So there we have it. The right-hand limit, the left-hand limit, and the function value are all different. But if you zoom back on this and 
you look at all of the calculation and what we've done, you might see that in fact we kind of have a piecewise defined function here. So let's notice for negative values of x, we have f of x is equal to one. So let's put one right there. And that means our graph is simply this horizontal line at one. And then let's see, for positive values of x, our function is equal to e. So if we go up here and put e, and we have a horizontal line going that way. Whereas finally, the value of the function is equal to two, which is obviously between one and e. So this would be the value of a, our function. So that's indeed the graph. So I guess like looking at the graph, this really is maybe even more naturally a piecewise defined function. Okay, so now that we've seen this example, maybe you have your own favorite example of something like this. So do you know of a function which is not naturally defined as a piecewise function that exhibits this kind of like strange behavior? Maybe post it in the comments and that's a good place to stop.